this is kind of the way it is in the the maths syllabus, the continuum of labor that you go through from like, you know, kindy all the way up until like now. At the beginning and um, at the early stages all the way through, you kind of learn about things and you don't know why they are. They're just kind of like, oh, it's there. It's kind of like the opening scene of a movie before like, you know, the um, title credits run and that kind of thing. You're like, what's going on? And then something, some character appears and they do something mysterious you don't understand. And you're like, what, what is the point of this? And if it's a good director, because sometimes there's no explanation at the end, um, like the Lost TV series, they're just making stuff oh. up. <laughs> but you know, if it's a good director, everything will be, it's like, aha, there will be like a payoff at the end. You know, like, um, like Snape, okay? So Snape is the p perfect kind of character. You're like, why is he doing that? What a jerk. And then at the end, you're like, oh, all the feels, okay? So this kind of thing <laughs> is taking something that you learned in year seven and it's finally explaining it, finally, okay? So we're going to look at two formulas involving volume, okay? Now the first one is the volume of this shape. And um, I actually would like you to draw it quickly for me because we're going to um, do, use this as sort of some basic working before we get to our Cartesian plane. This, of course, is our cone, right? So to work out the volume of a cone, just like the volume of a cylinder, you need two dimensions. What two dimensions do you need? Height. Okay. okay, good. So you need a perpendicular height, like so, and you need the radius of the base. So you need this distance in here. Okay, once you have these two, you get a formula, which is, it's very closely related to the volume of cylinders. Does anyone remember? Yeah. Very good. So interestingly, and this always puzzled me, the volume of a cone is exactly a third the volume of the cylinder with the same dimensions, the same base and the same height. Okay. Now the question is, how do we come about with this result? And how do we use integration to help us? So, this is a particular kind of shape, right? It's a volume that can be formed as a solid of revolution, right? A solid of revolution. How, in what axis is it rotated? <laughs> what axis is it rotated around? Oh, right. Well, in this one, the way I've drawn it, I've drawn it upright, okay? And I've rotated it around this vertical axis, right? I've done it that way. Um, so I'm going to be taking an area like this, okay? And I'm going to be rotating it around the y-axis, okay? So in order to translate that over to this, okay? This is a bit tricky. I want to make this as easy as I possibly can, okay? So in order to do that, I'm actually going to, number one, turn this on its side. And number two, rather than have it start sort of at the bottom here, we're going to have it start at the top. You'll see why in a second. Okay. So all I need is this triangular shape. Triangular shape. So it's a straight line that's going to be the function that leads me to this cone once I do the rotation. Okay. So I'm actually going to draw the line something like this. Okay. Here's a straight line, and I'm viewing the cone kind of sitting on its side. Right? So see this blue triangle that I shaded in? That's the area that's being rotated that forms the volume. Okay. So that sideways blue triangle I'm going to put in here. Okay. So now you can see I'm rotating around the x-axis. Okay. Now by the way, the reason why I'm choosing to rotate around the x-axis rather than the y-axis is because we tend to get functions y as a function of x. x tends to be the independent variable and y tends to be the dependent one, right? So therefore, I'll, it, it generally is easier to integrate with respect to x, okay? In this case, as you'll see, we could turn around fairly easily, but um, I'm going to stay with this way because it's more straightforward, okay? So when I rotate around this way, again, if you've got your rule there, right? Measure up to however high that ordinate went and then measure the same distance down to the bottom here. So you're getting something that should be roughly symmetrical, right? Looks to me on mine, something like that. And then we're going to draw the circular base over here. There you go. So you can see we're looking at this cone on its side. And that completes our solid, okay? So you can see how this equates to this, yes? Okay, good. Now. We've got some boundaries, right? I've got zero over there, and then I've got this boundary here. Now, hold on a second. I'm looking at the cone on its side, okay? So, how long do I want this length to be, according to what I've got? I want that to be the height, right? This is horizontal, but it corresponds to the height. So, therefore, 
that coordinate, uh, that x coordinate should be h, right? That would make it h units pi. Okay? And the same way, I want this radius to be r. Okay? Now that's the last piece of information I need to actually get the equation of this line. Okay? It's a straight line. It passes through the origin, so that means it's in the form y equals mx, where m is the gradient of the line. What is the gradient of this line? Hey, Brendan. R on h. Yeah, very good. Its gradient is rise over run, yeah? And I have the whole rise here, and I have the whole run there. R on h. Okay, that's rise over run. So there is my gradient, which gives me the equation of my straight line. That's all the pieces I need. Just watch this, okay? The volume, it equals 2. What are my boundaries? Lower and upper. Zero to H. Yeah, very good. Not to H. Right? Bless you. Now, the things that we're adding up together, the series of things we're adding together are cylinders. Okay. So this part here is going to be pi r squared H. But be careful. The radii correspond to this guy here. right? It's why? Because it changes all the way through. If I had a look at each different slice, they've each got a different... Um, Height, which means a different radius. So I've got pi times y squared, right, which is r on h x squared. There's my y squared with respect to x, and there's those infinitesimally thin widths that I was dealing with before. Okay, that was the hardest part of this, right? Do you see that this is my pi r squared h? Okay, but this corresponds to my vertical height, and it's changing. It's a function. Okay, so that's why I don't just put r there. Okay, now, just before I go and actually carry out the integration, you can see I have a whole bunch of constants in there, right? So I don't need to worry about them as I go through the process of integration. Um, the easy constant, of course, to identify is the pi that I can take out the front. What other constant do I end up with? R squared. Yeah, very good. Um, this whole thing gets squared, so I've got an R squared divided by an H squared. So I'm going to slap that out the front. Okay, so that's my constant coefficient, taking it out of the... Integrand, which leaves me with this. Super, super easy to do it with, right? So let's go ahead. Let's integrate. The primitive function, of course, is x cubed on 3, right? <coughs> the power goes up, and you divide by the power. And now we're about to evaluate at our upper and lower bounds, yeah? So pi r squared on h squared still hanging out the front there. What happens when you evaluate at the upper boundary? H yeah, very good. H cubed on 3. You evaluate it at the lower boundary. It just gives you take away 0. Okay, so that's something I don't need to worry about now. And then when you have a look, you're like, ooh, I have some H's that are going to cancel. Right? I've got two H's here. I've got three of them there. These will all go leaving one behind up there, which leaves you with, magically, a third pi r squared H. Is that beautiful or is that beautiful, right? It's really simple maths. Once you know where this comes from, admittedly, if you met this in year seven, you'd be like, why is there a curly, curly line there, right? Like, I don't know. Okay, it had to wait for now how much mass, like we had to develop differentiation, then integration, and then this particular version, um, this application of integration, to get to this result that you have known for very many years, okay?